Hey guys, welcome to Cobra Camp. And today, you might be wondering from my title. I mean, is this guy not like a body weight workout guy? Why is he saying he's doing a video about why body weight exercises don't work? Well, it was a little bit of a clickbait, and uh, sorry for that, but today we're gonna discuss a common misconception and discuss the reasons why generally speaking a lot of people think that you can't build a good physique from just body weight exercises so right here we're gonna discuss the four basic elements of effective training and these elements don't just apply to body weight training only but the gym as well if you're doing sports these four elements can be carried over into all aspects of fitness training however they are particularly important when it comes to bodyweight training and we'll get into why now just a quick note these are not in any order of like importance they're all i would say equally important and all should be worked on the same so dealing with the first one correct form now a lot of times persons do exercises and they say okay i am doing squats and i'm not feeling anything maybe my knees hurt but i'm not actually feeling anything in my muscle this is because they're not using correct form this thing this word form just refers to a position that allows you to use your muscle through a certain movement so for example if you want to train your legs and you choose lunges now lunges can either depending on your form more hit your quads or your hamstrings and butt if you do lunges and the distance between your your feet are very close together your stance is very close then you're gonna notice you feel it a lot more in your quads as opposed to your hamstrings and glutes your butt if you make that distance longer and longer you're gonna notice wait i'm doing these lunges and i'm feeling it less in my quads and more in my hamstrings and butt form just minor adjustments in your form can really affect what muscle you end up training another example a very basic exercise which i'll get into in other videos is push-ups just minor adjustments in your hand placement whether your hand is right below your chest a little in front or above your chest or a little below your chest this can affect which muscle takes more strain if you're doing push-ups and you're using you're like oh push-ups i just put my hands on the ground and i go and you're not thinking about your particular form when you do push-ups with your hand right below your chest you're gonna notice you push more with your chest muscle when you put it further and further in front of you you're gonna notice more you end up pushing with your shoulder muscle as you place your hands below your chest you're gonna notice hey i'm doing these push-ups and i'm feeling it more in my triceps this is because just simple adjustments in your form can really have big impacts on what muscle you train so a lot of times persons do exercises like push-ups and because their form isn't ideal or correct for want of a better description they don't end up training the muscle they intended so they go for months years saying oh my gosh i get no results from doing push-ups and that could have been largely due to incorrect form they simply want training their chest with the push-ups so that's a force that's one of the big reasons why bodyweight training is not effective for a lot of people because they're not paying attention to form and this goes past bodyweight training even in the gym you have persons working out for years and 
no results no results and when you go and check how they're doing these move movements you notice their farm is off and if your farm is not correct it's not gonna allow you to walk the intended muscle through the movement so a lot of people if they just pay close attention to their farm during the exercises you would notice you get to hit that muscle group a lot more so the second one on the list is effective programming of exercises now you might want the effective programming of exercises what exactly does that mean this simply refers to what exercises you group together and the order in which you do exercises for example I train my legs with just body weight and there's like maybe close to 50 different exercises you could do for your legs with body weights however some of them are not as taxing or don't give as much fatigue to your leg muscles so when I'm grouping exercises the lighter exercises I would make sure I group them more to the end of the combination of exercises so my muscle gets some time to build up some fatigue before it gets there and you need to realize that fatigue and muscle your muscles being tired is relative so for example if you just went on a hike and you now have to climb a flight of stairs you normally climb you're gonna feel like oh my gosh my legs just my body feels heavier and climbing that flight of stairs is gonna be a lot seem a lot more difficult because your legs are already tired and if you employ that principle with organizing your exercises you can get a lot more benefit out of your routine so maybe one of my routines is like um, wall sits with lunges as well as hamstring hip raises now wall sits is a static static motion you just sit there and keep your muscles flex and that in itself is not very taxing on the muscle so i would not put wall sits as the first exercise i would put it as the last i would first do the most taxing one lunges after i accumulated some fatigue I put in the hamstring hip raises, accumulate some more fatigue in my legs, then I would do the wall sits. So if I want to do the wall sits first and I'm doing like one minute, I would notice I finish the minute and my legs don't really feel tired. But placing it lower down in the circuit after you've accumulated some fatigue, those wall sits, that one minute feels hard, really difficult almost to the point of unbearable so effective programming of exercises what exercises you group together and relying on accumulating some fatigue to make an exercise more difficult is a really really key principle in coming up with an effective body weight routine and also it spills over into the gym however when you're dealing with exercises in the gym you kind of have more leeway because of the fourth principle on the list we're going to talk about which is overall work volume